YouTube, new Dark Side of Dimension level up card review, and the unreleased may be released by the time this video comes out. Blair level up rewards. Let's go. There can only be one winner, and you're looking at it. Let's go. Finally, Konami has boosted the level of the Dark Side Dimension characters. With that comes two cards per character. Some characters, it's not a new card. If it's not a new card, we won't even really talk about it. If it's a new card, we're going to talk about it. So, Joey Wheeler, should you level up Joey? If you level up Joey, you're going to get Vent Dra, the Empowered Warrior. Trash. Not a good card. Not even worth discussing. But it can attack directly, it's a tribute summon, and if sent from the field to the graveyard, you could target a dragon warrior or spellcaster, normal monster in your grave, add it to your hand. Garbage. Now, Seto Kaiba. If you level up Seto Kaiba, you're going to get two Neo Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragons. Well, if you remember, if you're subscribed on YouTube, I know you are, hit that subscribe button right now. You'd see that we already made a video about this. It did very well. Neo Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon one turn kill. How did we play the card without obtaining the card? Well, the skill automatically put one in our extra deck. And what does it do? Well, it is 4,500 attack and basically it can attack three times in a battle phase. Well, we couldn't use its other effect. Its other effect is you could banish it from the grave to protect a blue eyes monster on the field from being targeted by a card effect. Now we could use its second effect, which is banish itself from the grave and a blue eyes monster is targeted by a card effect, negate the effect and destroy it. That's an incredible effect. Now we have two, the skill only had one. So you don't need the skill, but if you play the skill, you can now play three. And because we could summon it multiple times, Instead of playing a cheesy one turn kill where we summon it once, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, one summon. Now we could perform more summons. We could play Necrofusion. We could banish the Blue Eyes White Dragons, which you need to banish three Blue Eyes White Dragons to summon the Neo to summon on your opponent's turn. Or you could Dragon's Mirror. Banish from your field or graveyard with Dragon's Mirror to summon your Neo Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon. And then on the attack, you'll send another one to the grave, so it will protect the one on the field. Triple attack, one turn kill deck, but we could still build it a bit differently. If this was good enough to post a YouTube video, it's gonna be even better now that we have two. Sarah, if you level up Sarah, you get Amaturasu, whatever. Now, this is a 3,000 attack, 3,000 defense, cannot be normal summoned, cannot be special summoned. The main way you're gonna summon her is by tribute setting. She needs an amazing effect if you could only tribute set. Well, first of all, to tribute set, Stray Lambs. Summon two tokens, then you could tribute set immediately. Now, we're going to try to hopefully have a way to search this card if we're going to play Stray and Lambs with it. Otherwise, you might just want to play in a deck like Thunder Dragons, where you could easily special summon monsters onto the field, then just tribute set over them, then trigger your Thunder Dragons. Now that we went through the trouble of tribute setting her, What's good? What's good is when she's flipped face up, she will banish every other card on the field. Banish everything. So it's like a black rose, but banish everything. And besides herself, she gets to stay on the field. You flip up, banish everything else, attack for 3000, goes back to your hand in the end phase. And then you could tribute set again if your deck is set up to do so, maybe like Thunder Dragon. So adding this to your Thunder Dragon deck might be nutty. Scud with the Stalos, the Mega Monarch. This card's pretty good, but if I don't have more than one, I might not build a whole deck around it. You could tribute it by tributing a tribute summon monster instead of tributing two monsters. So if you already tribute summoned, you could tribute that one monster to summon this double tribute monster. If you do that, you get to look at your opponent's hand, pick any card, discard it, and then if it's a monster, they take times 200 times the level of the discarded monster. Also, if your tributed monster happens to be a fire, you get to inflict an additional 1000 damage to your opponent. There's not really much to say about this. I don't think I'd build a whole deck around it. If I had multiple, then maybe I would. Now let's review the Blair cards. What does she get on level up when we get her? Let's see. 
Now, normally level up cards are going to be mixed with really bad cards and starting with a really bad card, Mutually Afford Destruction is a really bad card. You activate it, you and your opponent reveal their hands, each other's hands for the whole turn. If you have a card in your hand that's the same name as a card in their hand, they cannot activate cards with that name or their effects for that turn. That's garbage. Now, let's talk about Twilight Sworn. Now, my general thoughts of Twilight Sworn before reading all the cards and talking about them is, these cards work with Light Sworns by banishing them. All of them are gonna basically be banish a Light Sworn to do something. It's an unfinished deck type as we are waiting for more Light Sworn cards or maybe more Twilight Light Sworn cards, but we could still read these cards, know what they do, and get excited for when new Light Sworn cards come out. Maybe a box coming out will come out with new Light Sworn cards. That is what I'm predicting. So let's see what they do. Jane, once per turn during your turn in your main phase, not a quick play, you're gonna banish a Light Sworn. If you banish a level four Light Sworn, you could reduce your opponent's monster by 1200, effectively making Jane a 3000 attack monster. So not that good really. And also if a Light Sworn activates their effect, then you get to also send two cards off the top of your deck to the graveyard. And if you don't know this, Light Sworn monsters, they all mill in the end phase, a regular Light Sworn. It's also worth noting that Twi Light Sworn is a Light Sworn monster. So they could work with just each other. You don't have to actually have Light Sworn monsters to use their effects. Raiko, the Twilight Sworn fighter. On normal summon or being flipped face up, so on attack, it will flip up. It could banish any card on the field it doesn't target. So you're gonna summon Raiko. Banish a Light Sworn monster from the hand or graveyard, and then your opponent has to respond. If they don't flip up their back row card, you could banish their back row card and they cannot respond by flipping it up. It gets banished. It's kind of like a spellbook of fate if you know what that card does. Lila. Lila says when a spell or trap card or its effect is activated, you could quickly destroy a face up spell or trap. It'll be chain link too. So if they activate the effect of circle or activate circle itself, Lila will quickly destroy it by banishing another Light Sworn monster. So this will be good if this becomes relevant while Dark Magician is top tier. Counter them dirty Dark Magicians with Lila. Now, the big meat, the big monster, Punishment Dragon. If you have four or more different Light Sworns, which include Twilight Sworns, banished, they have to be different names, you could special summon Punishment Dragon. Punishment Dragon, during either player's turn, you're gonna pay 1,000 life to shuffle the entire graveyard in Banished back into each other's decks, except Light Sworn Monsters. So what's good about that is they grass that screener, they mill their entire deck, and then you're gonna return their entire deck back into their deck, but decayed. They're gonna use grass. They're gonna mill World Flame, and World Flame can be chained to the Punishment Dragon, right? Well, when they do grass, you activate Dragon, they chain World Flame in an attempt to banish their Spirit Master, which they will successfully do. The thing is, you are, they're gonna get banished on Chain Link 2, then Chain Link 1, the Dragon's gonna return the banished Spirit Master, the banished Shuranui, whatever they banished, and their entire graveyard back in the deck. They won't activate. Even though they were banished on Chain Link 2, and then the Dragon returns them afterward, they will not activate their banish effects. So it completely counters Grass at Screener, completely counters World Flame, it counters Shuranui. Now, Twilight Eraser, this card is actually nuts. Imagine if Treacherous banished any two cards on the field, because that's exactly what this does. You know how good Treacherous is? This will banish any two cards on the field. But a huge drawback is the requirement to activate this card is much harder than a Treacherous Trap Hole, and it should be. Well, what are the restriction? The restriction is you need two Light Swords on the field, they have to have the same type, but a different name. And you have to have two Light Sworns in the graveyard to banish to even activate this effect. 
So if we look at the other light swarms we have, this is a spellcaster, this is a beast, this is a warrior. So with Jane, Ryko, and Lila, it would not even work. You need different names, same type on the field, two of them, to even activate this card by banishing two light swarms. Now, if this is milled from the deck to the graveyard by a light sworn monster's effect, it will activate to special summon a light sworn from your hand. And that's probably going to be the main way you actually use this card with that small chance, maybe late game where you actually get to banish two cards on the field. And that is my quick review of the Blair level up rewards when we get her and new Dark Side of Dimension level up card review. Get to level 33, level 35 with those characters and get the cards we reviewed. Fools!